Hello, how's everybody doing today? How's everybody out? Everybody doing? Can everybody hear me out there? Cool. It looks like we have Facebook. Hey, Machi, Rami. Thanks. Thanks for confirming. I think we need um. Let's see. YouTube. All right. YouTube can hear me. Thanks. We'll get started in a couple minutes. Thanks for joining the stream. I'm putting up some links. Uh, meanwhile, let's see. Awesome. Cool. The voice and the music sound okay? So Miguel Guerrero, thanks for joining the stream. Uh, we'll be creating some uh, cool stuff today, hopefully. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's pretty light music, just just to not make it so quiet. Um, cool. So this is my website. Uh, if you guys want to check it out, it's magvfx.com. I post that stuff on there. Uh, you guys want to follow me on Twitch? It's uh, twitch.tv magvfx.com. Uh, Instagram as well, SmackVFX. And if you guys want to check out some of the past streams, you guys can check me out on the ZBrush Live um, presenters. And then you'll find a lot of my uh, my previous streams. So we'll be talking about some of this stuff. And then, um, yeah, check that stuff out. And move this out of the way. Hey, good day. Where is everybody tuning in from today? We'll start sketching some stuff. Meanwhile, well, you know, I had a. I want to show you guys a few things that I did this uh, last week or two. Uh, my bag. That's just my portfolio of the stuff that I do professionally. Uh, the MagbeFX.com. Uh, In case you want to see kind of what I've been doing with ZBrush and that type of stuff. Yeah, I was going to show you guys some stuff, um, but uh, right before the stream, like literally like two minutes or five minutes right before the stream, I got inspired to do this little this little creature. I don't know really why, but uh, I think I want to just continue it a little bit on the stream and then we, we can go and show you guys some of the other stuff that we've been kind of working with while we wait for more people to join. If that's okay with you guys. You know, we are creating on the fly, so it's all good. Let's see. Hey, Kevin. Pennsylvania, awesome. As Ash Toshu. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for joining. Yeah, well, today we're going to probably be talking about a lot of the stuff that I've been doing on the iPad and then exporting it to ZBrush and how that all works because I know some people have been asking about that. So, figure we can kind of talk about that a little bit what do you guys think does that sound uh, cool to you but for some reason I was looking up references for crabs for this uh, other sketch that I did in ZBrush and I got pretty inspired to just for some reason sketch something out so sometimes when you get that urge to to talk to just create something <laughs> you should kind of go with it from India? Alright, cool. Florida? Nice. Let's 
So I don't know. I don't know why. So I'm just gonna go with this for a little bit, and then we'll switch gears. That's cool with everybody. We'll just be sketching as we're as we're chatting away here. Yeah, but sometimes those moments of inspiration uh, kind of hit. This kind of started from, uh, I was looking at some reference for crabs and I found this. And for some reason I got some ideas in my head that I wanted to just kind of quickly sketch out. So we'll go with that. Hey, how's it going in Brazil, huh? Nice, nice. So one thing I like doing a lot is uh, switching materials, you know, just to kind of help me... Um, See forms differently, that type of stuff. But yeah, sometimes when inspiration strikes, you can't you can't just pass it up. Not sure if anybody else is having this issue with the latest ZBrush or not, but I noticed that um, my snake hook doesn't work as the way it used to work. Let's see. Hey, Rudy, how's it going, man? Let's see. Oh, nice, man. That's great. That's great. It's good. To just keep pushing, man. It's all about. It's all about just uh, like I say, failing a lot, right? Like I tend to fail a lot, and I tend to make a lot of uh, mistakes. And the faster you get through those mistakes, the the more confident you're gonna get about kind of moving on to different parts of uh, your career, right? Or, or trying different things. Let me lower the volume a little bit on this. Um, and that's gonna help you kind of, you know, try to push forward on a lot of this stuff, you know. But I'm glad that you're, you're moving forward to all this stuff because you've been doing printing and all this stuff. So this is going to be just super helpful for you as well. So yeah, looking at that crab just kind of got me very inspired to want to do this. So <laughs> let's just go with it for a little bit and then we'll switch gears. Uh, yeah, I speak Spanish too. ¿Por qué tienes preguntas en español? Yeah, if you guys have questions in Spanish, feel free to ask as well. I'll try to respond, hopefully. Let's see, I don't know what's going on there. Hey, what's up, side effects? Oh, God, that's that's awesome, man. Yeah, this is. I I, just, I was gonna show. I'm gonna show you guys some of the stuff that I've been working on. You know, the, some stuff I've been doing on the iPad, like this guy, and kind of exporting to ZBrush and work, some variations we're gonna work on. And also, uh, let's see, this guy was another iPad sketch. So we'll probably refine some of these guys and kind of kind of talk talk about the process. Cause they're just sketches that I'm doing on the iPad and then bringing them here and then kind of going, you know, going crazy with them and detailing them, getting them ready for print. So it's like, it's nice to be able to <clears throat> do that when you're just sitting on the couch, kind of just um, chilling, watching a movie or hanging out with your kids and then sketching some stuff while you're doing that, you know, but let's just continue on this guy a little bit more. This guy was just kind of inspired out of nowhere. So just kind of want to push push along just just get them far enough where my idea is out and then I have it ready for for whatever let's 
let's see. No, it's not ZBrush. It's another application. It's called, um, well, there's a couple, right? There's Forger. And then there's also the new one that everybody's using. And that's the one that I did all this stuff in was um, Nomad. Uh, and, and it seems to be pretty nice. It's uh, nice and fluid. It's like the, yeah, you can't get millions and millions of polygons, but you can get enough to make something look decent, which is cool. And then from there, export it here and then really go to town on it, you know? But it, it's just like generating ideas and being able to kind of do that quickly. That's the main thing, right? Like when those ideas strike, just like right now, like the ideas just just comes out. You got to just go with it. And sometimes you're not around your computer and you want to sketch. And that's a good way to sketch. Oh, thank you. Hanuman. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't sculpt in Blender. I'm, I'm actually going to try to learn Blender because a lot of people have been asking me questions about that and I don't know how to use it. <laughs> So I think I'll, I'll start figuring that out. Yeah, but let's get this guy, let's get this, this guy at neck. And I'll also show you guys the, the Mandrake that I finished up. I, I pr finally printed it out. Um, I'm going to try to print out a bigger version. So this is only just a prototype of for the bigger version but i will talk about the cuts and prepping your model and you know when you're doing just prototypes sometimes you just have to do it quickly right so the main thing to do is just get it out and see what's what's going on with it so i, I didn't add a few keys but i added enough stuff to make it work and sometimes that's all you need you know so here i'm just trying to Add a little bit of a neck on this guy so we can see what he, he's going to look like if we were to add a neck. Let's see. <clears throat> so we can make that a little bigger. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, let's see, which one, which, what's the question? Have you ever tried with topology of complex geometry with New Zealand mesh? Yeah, it, it works pretty well. Uh, it really depends what you're gonna use it for. You know, if you're gonna use it for printing, it's great. If you're gonna use it for animation and production, it depends, you might have to customize a few um, a few things on it, you know, so we could probably run it on this and see what that looks like just to see what kind of results we're getting. Uh, let me just add a little bit of a, a little bit more geometry to make it this guy. Make him a little bit of a bust. And then we could Z remesh it so we could try it on here so you can see what, what kind of results we're getting. Of course, you could guide it and all that stuff, but I prefer to do all my all my stuff is for, for a specific character. Let's see these flaps have to open up and there's different parts of the face that are moving. I prefer to do it by hand because I, I know I can control it. But uh, sometimes Z-Remesh gets you some some decent, res decent results. But you know, it depends what, what it's for. If it's for printing, it's it's perfect. If it's for production, if it's something that's like more like a rock or something that's not going to deform, it could work a lot of the times. But if it's something else, sometimes it, it does it. If we're continuing, let me just save this guy. I kind of like where he's going. All right, let's uh, Z remesh this guy. So usually what I do, I duplicate it, All right? Let's hide the other one. Let's go to Z remesh and let's see what happens. Thanks, uh, sometimes it's hard to, it's, it's easy to miss some of the questions. Uh, let's see for for printing do we have to add mesh on the inner side of the uh, yeah usually what I do I'll tend to hollow things out so let's check out this C remesh uh, let's turn on the frame it's not too bad it seems like it, it's capturing a lot of these guys and kind of 
making borders around them, which is nice. So this could potentially be useful. But some of the things that I would adjust is like the, the flow of this. You see how the flow is kind of coming down this way? And I kind of want it, I would kind of want it to go more on this outside border. Um, it's doing okay on the eyes. So this could be useful, but like I said, I prefer to do this all, all by hand. But that's just a preference, you know? It also depends on how much time you have. Oh, with a lot of booleans, I think sometimes the issue is that uh, you didn't close the full volume, and sometimes there might be like a tiny little hole somewhere. And when you're trying to boolean some of that stuff, it just errors out. So you might want to check for holes. That's that's a pretty important one. I right, said so we'll come back to this guy. Let's talk about our, our little mandrake guy. Here we go. So we have our little mandrake guy. Let me see. Let me show you guys uh, what we printed. So we got this guy all printed out. Um, he's made of multiple pieces. And this is as big as my form two can print in uh, multiple pieces, right? So this is my limitation currently. I could probably cut it somewhere up here and make everything bigger, but then it becomes more of a seam problem. So there's already plenty of seams that I want to take care of. So this is a good prototype. You know, it's a good, um, it's a probably good eight inches. Eight to eight to ten inches, you know, with all the, the length of, of the stuff. Let me see. Hopefully that hopefully that's clear in camera. Um, but the problem is that I want to print it bigger, right? I want to print it so that uh, you know this could probably fit in the garden bed and come out and it looks nice. But I want to print it maybe double the size, so he's so he can sit down and or I could have him on, on a display. So let me show you guys what kind of what, the way I cut him. If you guys are interested in that, uh, let's see. Uh, I just started using literally 2021 like a day ago. <laughs> like I just installed it because I've been. I usually stick to uh, a working version, but I'm just exploring that. So I haven't even touched any of the cloth or any any of the new features really. So hopefully in the next coming weeks I could start doing some of that. Um, so let's talk about this guy. This guy. Let's turn off the wire. So these are some of the pieces that I split him up to, right? And some of the some of the ideas of why I broke this off. Um, it's because the legs can be printed separate and give me more, give me this whole volume of the body or the torso to print in one piece. And here's like one of the other pieces. So I decided that this piece tucks in nicely into that and it's kind of a nice seamless transition. It's kind of like his little buttocks, you know, and it kind of hides the seam around that, that vine and then they hit scratch, right? And that's kind of where we have another vine coming out. So. You could potentially cut it there, kind of like what you're seeing here. And same thing with this, right? This was a nice cutoff, a nice way to blend this stuff in. Same thing, kind of cut it around his buttocks a little bit. This one's the one that I maybe might redo a different way. Um, like maybe cut it uh, a little higher so that so there's a better seam. But I wanted to kind of just do it quickly so. This is one thing that I did, you know, so I would probably go a little higher on that. One thing that I was kind of surprised it didn't break off and it's still working is uh, a lot of the legs, the legs, the legs and the little thin pieces kind of all worked out pretty nicely um, as one piece, like the big chunk of the leg, you know, and everything goes, even some pieces that I, I made thin to thick and to thin came out pretty nice. So if you guys can see that, uh, I'm not sure if I have one other camera that does no I don't have the setup on this uh, but you guys can see this I, if you guys check out my Instagram you guys can see it um, but you guys can also see it here right um, so the next thing that I was gonna print is the teeth and the eyes well the, the teeth and the, and the tongue that's probably the next thing that I would print and maybe the flowers but I think for the flowers uh, once I once I learn how to use the um, the cloth I might put some more detail into them or potentially even um, just kind of do fake fake uh, fake uh, plants you know and just kind of attach them on there because it might be easier than trying to print plants and that way you could also customize it to whatever plant you have if you go to the store and buy like a specific plant you like you could just attach it you just got to find like the right scale for it 
Uh, but yeah, that's kind of some of the pieces, and then some of these pieces. Um, let me see. Let's solo that guy. You know, they all have keys. So a lot of these guys, I will probably put keys on on the next print. You know, so I'm gonna recut this again and kind of put nice keys. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the the mandrake. It, it came out pretty nice. The detail came out okay. Let me see if I can find some pictures that I posted on Instagram. Let me show you guys. Uh, not sure how well this is gonna show up, but yeah, it's it's much clearer here because you can kind of see it on a bigger screen, right? But it came out pretty good. It's about the size of my hand, so this is probably about five inches. So the other way is probably about eight to ten inches. But yeah, I feel like it came out pretty good, so we'll we're gonna make a bigger version of them, and then we're gonna paint them. I'll probably paint a prototype of this guy, just to just to have. Uh, let's see. Hey man, thanks. Oh, th thank you, thank you. you. Saw the interview. Yeah, yeah, I did. A, I've been doing a few interviews, so if you guys want to check those out, they're uh, on my Instagram. Check those out. They're they're on YouTube. You know, just talking about career, life, and the journey of of what it took to get here, and what I how I uh, struggled through a lot of this stuff, and how I succeeded. Um. But yeah, that's kind of what the Mandrake's all about. So, you know, if you guys follow the last two streams, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, I'll probably post some pictures of, of the keys later once I do it. If you guys are interested, post some of that stuff. But if not, then no big deal. Um, so, then there's these guys, right? Oh, thanks, thanks. Cool. Uh, so this guy started off as an iPad sketch. Uh, on, on this uh, new pad called Nomad, uh, which is really nice. It's it's like your ZBrush on iPad, you know. Uh, but it's nice that I can bring the OBJ export the OBJ out and kind of mess around with this. So one of the things that I wanted to do on here was uh, let me hide the other one. Play around with variations. Like, do I want the ears up? Down? Do I want different types of ears? Yeah, yeah. I kind of want to make a full size house elf. Uh, like uh, maybe three, three feet tall or something, four feet tall, something like that. Maybe three, so it doesn't take up so much room. So this is kind of the idea, right? Like, so I'm kind of looking at some of my references for Harry Potter. I've been watching a lot of Harry Potter type of stuff. So, so we'll work on this stuff today too. Uh, but it's nice to be able to get to this level. Now we can start refining some of these forms, and you know, I even blocked out a little body for him. Uh, I'm not super happy with the body, so I might just redo that. But um, you know, we'll, we'll find out. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what he's like. You know, just kind of figuring he's kind of a bit of a hunchback. But this is just a sketch of the body, of potential what I might do. Uh, you know, added a little bit of cloth to him. What what potentially could that look like? Just blocking out this stuff. But today we're probably going to concentrate on the head and then um, see which head we like. Because they both have cool features about them. And also maybe make some variations of this guy. So uh, now that we have enough primary forms and secondary forms. We can probably start. It's like do we want a little fat guy? Do we want a super skinny guy? Do we want to change some of the features? Like some of the features that I was changing between these two guys. Is if you notice like the noses are kind of changing the ears. And also the chin right. Does he have a really small chin maybe? Does he have a big chin? So maybe we'll play around with this stuff. Let's. Uh, one thing we can do that's going to make it easier to do this is that we notice it's pretty dense. So moving pretty dense stuff and you're just trying to play with proportions is not a not a good thing. So one thing we're going to do is duplicate this stuff. Um, we still have it on solo. Z remesh it, and then start tweaking some proportions. Now that we, now that we're going to have a lower res mesh. And for that, some of the references I've been I've been collecting references last night. Um, just kind of looking at different faces. Uh, let me see if I can. This thing is not uh, cooperating. Let me create a pure ref for this real quick. For a lot of the stuff that I found, it's from different, you know, like from uh, Harry Potter and different uh, artists and photos. Mostly some photos because I want to base it on reality. Okay, there's an upgrade, so let's just do this real quick. All right, so now we have a pure ref. Let's let's share that with you. 
So this is some of the stuff that I've been looking at, like some, some really cool stuff, but some of the stuff that I was looking at too was like, what are some of the facial features that I kind of want to add? You know, you start getting all these cracks when people start losing their teeth and that type of stuff. So and so there's some other cool takes on this stuff. Like this is really nice. Uh, like this old guy, this guy, you know, if I, I'm thinking of doing a longer nose, what does that really look like? You know, it's cool to have the ones they did for the movie, but what does that really look like in real life when you have somebody with a big nose, you know? Like how much is that covering up their bottom lip? So we'll start implementing some of that stuff. Types of wrinkles for old people. These guys probably are a couple hundred years old. What do they look like, you know? I know some of you guys like looking at this stuff uh, to kind of when I'm talking about uh, kind of, you know, what, what did the light list look like? Look at this crazy detail down here. It almost looks like paper mache. All right. So this is the type of stuff I'm looking at when I'm trying to create, trying to update my, my guy. Let me just move this out of the way. So maybe this is some of the features we're going to check out, you know. Uh, now that we have this guy, let's just project the detail that we already have. So one, uh, you know, make sure everything else is off. Usually you could probably leave it on, but I tend to turn it off just to make sure there's no errors. So we divide it once, project, maybe divide it one more time, project. And once it feels like it's one to one, which this is pretty good. So now we can actually start tweaking the stuff. This is where we could use layers, right? Now that we know we have enough subdivisions, well, let me undo that real quick. Let's subdivide it one more time so we get a little more resolution. We're not even at a, let's see, we're at a 800. All right, three mils, good. Three mils should be pretty good for this. Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? Uh, so now we create a layer here and we're gonna be tweaking this base, right? So let's see, we really wanted the, let's see his proportions. Let's look at some of the nose, the nose stuff. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys coming to the stream and checking this stuff out because uh, it's good. It's good to hang out with other fellow artists and create stuff, you know. Maybe this guy has a little bit more of a brow. And we'll do we'll do a few versions. We'll do um that's kind of stuff I want to explore. I know a lot of you guys haven't used or don't use um layers, which I know I, I only understand sometimes it's daunting to try to use some of this stuff and or not knowing how to use it. I could look at some real nostrils. Or some real long nose stuff. This guy has a pretty interesting nose, uh, a real nose too. So, which is good. Let me show you guys the one I'm talking about. Uh, where is it? Uh, not that guy. Black and white image. This guy. This guy has a pretty interesting nose. Like uh, the nostrils, see how they get pretty thin at the end, but then he gets kind of a bulbous nose. So that's kind of what I'm looking at to try to recreate. You know, just get inspired by it. It doesn't have to be exactly. So that's kind of what I'm changing here, you know. Like instead of just having like a pointy nose, it'll be, to, it'll be nice to have a little bit more structure. And then the nice thing about that guy is well, we have the resolution, but we can cut this in half. So let's add a little more resolution and cut a little less strong. So this guy has some pretty interesting features. But yeah, hopefully this is not too boring for some of you guys. And we're, you know. So 
So one thing I tend to do is kind of cut pretty pretty deep, and then uh, kind of tone it down. So we can check some of our updates, what are, we, what are we doing, what are we changing. And if you like some of them, you can commit. If not, then you can always uh, add or re if there's something that you didn't like. Like let's say, um, I know if some of this stuff is kind of boring to you guys, I just want to kind of show you like some of the workflows. Okay, cool. No, this is great. This is great. So let's say this create another layer, right? And we. Let's say I, I adjust the chin. Like it's just another version that I went pretty extreme, right? And you're like, ah, oh, kind of. I don't know if I really like it. You know, you, then you could be like, I want to dial this stuff down. Like maybe you like it, but you only like it like 50%. For me, I find it's better to type in a number. You know, and then you could just keep 50% of that. Or, or another thing that I do too is uh, from the beginning, let's say go back to the, the first part, make a morph target. So let's make a morph target, store a morph target. And let's say, um, where's my layers? There we go. We have this layer, right? And we go back to record. Let's put it back at one. And let's say you don't like a few things, like maybe you like the sides, but you don't like the chin part. You can use the morph brush and st start, well, let's turn on the record and start getting it back to the original position of where it was. And you keep the sides, you know, and then you can kind of, it's returning it back. That's how much we have adjusted it. And let's say you only keep, you only want to keep the sides. So you could do that as well. So you kind of Frankenstein all this stuff, you know? Well, I, I only say boring just because some people might be like, oh, I, I already know this stuff. But, but if you guys don't, that's the whole point, right? Like kind of showing you guys different ways of working. But um, okay, no, that's good. This is great. That's Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're kind of making design choices and that's kind of what we're doing now, right? Like I have this layer and I'm just kind of tweaking and kind of looking at like, are these changes actually useful or maybe the brow is, maybe the brow is not, but you see now the nose feels like it has a better structure, but maybe I need to tweak the rest of the stuff. But you know, you could, you could choose to do like areas, like you have a layer for just the brow part, uh, a layer for just the nose part. I tend to kind of do two or three layers, depends on what it is. Um, and kind of just tweak from there, but it's nicer to tweak something that's low because it's so much faster to to do that instead of having something that's super dense. And then when you're pulling, you can see dents on the model, right? So here, one thing I kind of want to just kind of keep going uh, with this guy. It's kind of looking at his nostril, and those are those are the type of structure structure detail I'm trying to adjust. Not not so much like. Um, Like I find it interesting that he has a line that kind of does that. Then we can start playing around with the nasal labial fold, you know. And a lot of these changes that I'm doing are like pretty subtle, but they'll, you know, like the chin part, right? Like. Like I feel like his chin could probably be cut in the middle, like, and they gave it a little more volume. Maybe the connection part is also like he is an old guy, so he has those like old p old man features. But I also want him to look fun and cool and a little bit stylized. You know, it doesn't have to be photo real. Maybe you could make the rendering photo real, but the proportions don't have to be. You know, so maybe we add a little bit more volume here. 
It costs a bit at a lower resolution. So sometimes it depends, right? I use the inflat or sometimes I use clay. Uh, clay depends. Like in this case, I feel like clay is going to do a much cleaner job. You see, because inflat was kind of adding like a, like a, like breaking it down like a bean, like breaking it in the center. <laughs> yeah, I know. It depends, right? It all depends. Some, some people see, you see what you want to see on the shapes. Uh, let's see the knife. Uh, let me, let me. Yeah, yeah, so I, I've been playing around with the knife and the damp standard, right? It all depends. Both of those are kind of the same thing as what I was just talking about, the inflat and the clay. Like, there's times when one works better than the other, and that's kind of when you want to kind of mess around with that, you know? Like, for like this case, like, I feel like the knife will work better for, like, all these crow's feet type of stuff. But if I use the the damn standard, it 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 there, see it's it's a little different. Like it, it's not gonna work as nice. It kind of it's so soft. But that stuff will work great for this this bottom mouth stuff. You know, like like it's softer transition. So, but you know you can mix and match. It. It's really up to you. Like what kind of stuff you like. Like from what I'm looking at, this guy, this old guy, he has like a volume down here that's pretty interesting. You know, to give him a little bit of a, I guess he still has his bottom teeth, but not maybe not his top teeth. Yeah, the, the sharp nose, it makes him look more wicked, right? But I also want like a little bit of a break up there, you know, so we have like the nostril and you kind of see like, like from the side profile, you can see a little bit of that. Let's change the, the lighting. Maybe not too much, but just a bit. You know, so you have this teardrop shape that kind of goes into this, this sharper. But then this has to have some structure, you know, a little bit of bulbous, but still sharp. Also, I think we had eyes with this guy. So let's uh, turn those eyes on. If they're still there. I don't know where they went. I think they're probably inside the mesh. Awesome, our first crash. So we just crashed. No big deal. It happens. <laughs> so now we just wait for this thing to save whatever it wants to save. But you see, crashes happen to all of us. So it's not a. I'm sure if it happened to you, and you lost an hour of work, that would suck. Which we probably lost just about 20 minutes of work on this guy or less. But maybe we have a save. Let's find out. Recovery tool. We'll find that. I think we we should be able to be safe. Let's see. We'll switch this guy. Yeah, so it crashed, but see this kind of where where we start seeing the changes, you know? Where it goes from being a bit cartoony, but maybe we need to keep the sharpness of the nose to like now the chin is looking much better. Where before it was just kind of a little nub, but now it's starting to actually have some structure. And that's kind of what we're doing, right? We're not changing the model completely. We have some variation. Maybe we have a fatter one or something else, or a longer face one. But we're making those features a little bit more on the realistic side, so they're not as as cartoony, I guess. And making design choices, you know, like uh, maybe I'll ch change the ears just like I had with the other guy. But we were with the eyes, right? We're trying to fix those eyes. I don't know where they went and I don't know why it crashed. Oh, look at that there. They shrunk. 
<laughs> they're like really small. It's pretty funny. Let's just make some new ice, just to. Because uh, why not? Turn that off. Luckily, I saved my other guy, right? My little crab looking dude. Because, uh. And eyeball sizes is up to you, but usually it's like one between. So you have like, if you had one in the middle, right? Then you have another one here, and then you have another one. So it's about five eyes. Some people say six. It all depends on, on your style and what you're doing, but yeah. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for joining the stream. Um, cool. So we got those guys kind of placed in there. Let's press X to make sure we're moving them in symmetry. Hey, ¿qué pasó? Guard dog, <laughs> war dog. Love people's uh, usernames. So there we go. So now we have some eyeballs, and now we could refine some of those lids, you know, because the lids were starting to get a little soft. And the nice thing is that we have that layer. So let's make sure it's all good. We're on record mode. Go down to level three and start tweaking that. That way everything's actually fitting around a, a socket, you know, something that actually has, let's see. Hey, what's up, Argentina? Thanks for joining. Gracias por venir. See, so here's a nice time to use the knife. The knife, unfortunately, I cannot give you guys a knife because I don't own it. It's it's something that I bought from Pablo. So if you guys pop Pablo's brushes, it comes with that. And then when you just put it in your interface, it should be there. And that's why I didn't, I'm didn't. i not giving that one away. So it's like here at zbrushguides.com. Uh, check out his stuff. He, he's a really cool, another streamer as well, a really cool dude that I had the opportunity to meet. So... And the brushes are pretty cheap. It's like 10 bucks or something. So, uh, you know, 10 or 15 bucks. So it's totally worth it. And you're supporting another artist, which is, which is great. But a lot of the other brushes are included. I think that's the only brush that I, I chose not to include because I paid for it. And, you know, we should support other artists. So whenever we can. I know it's not always possible, but when you can, you guys should. Because you want somebody to support you eventually, right? Support, help you support your artwork. So sometimes the easy way to do that is to just help other artists out. But let's continue. So let's see. So some of the stuff that I noticed that I haven't, that I don't have on mine from the old guy is uh, this triangle here. Well, it's it's there hinted, but it could be better, you know. Or another thing too is like the blend of that. So let me turn. See how I have this fat fold, the, the nasal labial fold that kind of comes over. It's great to have the the crease at the bottom, but usually it's not crease at the top unless you're like, you're smiling and it's actually creating the the little fat part. But uh, here it's like just kind of cut, right? So those are the things I want to create and help, help with uh, aid in uh, in kind of blending. But there's also another volume that's up here that I'm highlighting now that I kind of want to help uh, add a little bit more more volume to it, right? So we can do a couple different things and add a little bit of clay, smooth that out. And I like having this view because then you could turn off the brush. 
and you can see that maybe you need to add a little bit more from the front so the, it's good to tumble as well you kind of push some of these volumes out smooth some of that out and also add a little bit of clay down here maybe at less intensity just to kind of fill in that that triangle section I was telling you about so now that we took the mask off now we can start blending this together see so now we remove that and it makes it feel a little more natural but of course I introduced this little bump so let's move that out of the way so let's check out that difference so you guys can see kind of what I'm talking about because sometimes it's easy to see sometimes it's not So you see that crease. Now it's uh, less less intrusive. Oh, let's turn that on. And blend that in. And it's now we still have it here pretty strong, but now it's starting to kind of fade on the top, just like it should, right? Uh, oh, awesome! Th thank you. Yeah, that, it's 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 a great set of brushes. There's a lot of uh, a lot of different brushes on there, but I I only use that one because I only had time to really explore that. Uh, but it's totally worth the buy, and you know you're helping other fellow artists, so that's that should always be seen as a good thing. Yeah, he has all these different different clay clay brushes, um, which is which is pretty awesome awesome stuff, you know. So if you look, you know, comes with tons of this stuff so you I'm sure you'll find it useful for other things um, but I highly recommend them uh, so let's see let's continue tweaking this stuff Yeah, I'm a bit into the, a little bit into the Harry Potter world right now, just because I've been watching the, the movies the last couple of weeks with my daughter, kind of introducing her to <laughs> want to be a wizard or. A, she's super into. She's only five. She's only four and almost five. So she's super into this stuff. Uh, okay, let's, so let's see. Let's add some more, stronger. Some, uh, clay tubes is also a good one too, but you just have to. Remember that you're going to have to be strong about, like I'm adding these like really, really strongly. So that they're more visible on the stream. But what I'll do is I'm going to smooth them out. So that's, you know, I, I kind of, it helps me see them better. And then you can kind of see some of this stuff that. Also carving in, you know. Any questions uh, out there? Uh, let's see.
Uh, this is mostly just for fun, uh, when, uh, this is just for me just to have fun experimenting with different ways of doing stuff, like bringing stuff from the iPad or VR into ZBrush and then fine tuning it and getting it to an actual product that either you're going to 3d print or 3d render. That's going to be photo real or, or not so photo real. I do the production type of stuff. Uh, I just, uh, I do more mentoring on, on that end in case some people actually want want to learn more about that because that's a whole different workflow right like uh, the way the way you will work for production and the steps these are more like kind of concept and getting your ideas out that's kind of what this whole this whole stream is about and creating stuff that you know you have a 3d printer or you have some ideas that you want to make into a poster or something then you, you can So one thing I'm trying to make sure is I contain the, the thickness on the on the lid throughout, you know, if there's any wobbles when I move stuff around, kind of clean those up. Let's see, let's look at some other references. Oh, let's see, some more, some more questions. This one is kind of interesting too. You look kind of weird looking character. But you see how much of that nostril you see. It's a very, very different type of nose. Let's see. Only one way. Hey, how's it going, man? Oh, thank you. Okay, awesome. No, that's good. Thank, thanks. I'm, I, 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 I'm trying to keep this entertaining so that you guys get out of it. You guys get something out of it. And it's fun and you guys want to come back. And for me too, you know, like... Trying to keep these fun so everybody wants to come back next time. Or if you have questions, don't you know? Don't be shy. So this is what I was talking about. See how rough I, I put these things in, and then I go. Sometimes I erase them almost all the way, but I just want to get a little bit of light, light hints, and kind of break some of those forms up. Now that we kind of establish a lot of the primary stuff. You know, and sometimes some of these guys, I'll do a cavity, uh, either mass by cavity. Sometimes cavity sucks. In this case, cavity is okay. Or sometimes uh, peaks and valleys. See, peaks and valleys give me kind of a different range, and then I smooth it out. Now we can go ahead and use that. So I, I just turn it off visibly, but I didn't get rid of it, and then I could go and. Give these guys some volume so they're not just flat cuts. That's the main thing, right? Like, you don't want to just be like you're scrying with a knife. You actually want to give this stuff volume as well. And you can turn it back on to kind of see what you're doing. This also helps break sometimes some of this stuff up a little bit. Just a tiny bit. So you see now that we have a little bit of volume, so when I'm smoothing, I'm smoothing something that's round, it's not just a cut. Oh, awesome. I'm glad you're digging it. Oh, thanks, Alex. Thanks, one way. Or oh, only one way. No. Uh, but yeah, I tend to do some of that and I erase it. Because at the end, it's like, how is this reading, you know? Is it reading fine? Like, I'm liking the way it's looking from the three-quarter view. And a little bit of the side view. Maybe need to break up that nose nose and kind of give it an arch. Uh, this guy's a pretty good reference too for for that. Let me show you. You know, kind of a different nose, but similar. Like, you know, they're in the ballpark. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm looking at. So maybe I'm gonna give it a little bit more of an arch. So it's like a hook nose. Maybe a hook nose will work better. So one thing I'm doing is breaking up that giant curve. I don't want it to just be a full curve from the side view. I want it to be kind of like, you know, that you have a, a, a nose, uh, you know, you have the bridge of your nose and then it kind of dips and then it kind of falls down. And then here it's nice and round. 
But yeah, one thing I, I'm not sure if I'm digging is the, the jaw, right? Like the jawline. The jawline feels to me maybe too too maybe too sunk in. So we're gonna play around with that now. But let's uh, go one level of resolution down and see what we can do. And this is where we can maybe introduce another layer. Because now we're playing with a different area. So you have to go back to your highest level. So let's see how our, our current changes have been affecting the model. Uh, my perspective on so we can see what's what's going on. So you guys can see how much we're changing this, right? And refining this. Like I like the old eyes a little better, so I might go back and tweak some of that, but we'll see. Let's see. Yeah, so now that we have that, let's create one for the jaw, and then we could figure out what we want to do with that. Well, before we continue, we should save, actually. Let's just save because that's still a recovery tool. Um, hell self. Okay, cool. Save. So let's play around with that jaw. See, I really, I already don't like it. <laughs> That's okay. We have history. We can go back to that first part where I create the layer. I went too far back, I guess. Let's double check that. No, I didn't. So let's uh, let's tweak that jaw again. I think it needs to stick out a little bit, but not too much. One thing we want to look at too is, is the teeth, right? Like, since the jaw is all part of this, this whole section, his teeth, if we looked at his dentures before, they were really, really small, like kind of like pointy. We need to round them off because they obviously have teeth to eat, right? So, even if they maybe don't have all their teeth, they still have a little, like the. I guess what I call the muzzle of the mouth, right? There's still like a. A circle there, or so we can change this pointy, pointing chin. Let's see what is that looking like? I think the back of the jaw works. The front, the chin is. Maybe a little too pointy. So let's create a morph target before we did that. Right, so you can always go back here to morph target, delete the current one, store a new morph target, um, press record, and with the morph brush, go down to your intensity. So when you're doing it, you're just removing a little bit at a time instead of just removing the whole thing. That's one of the important things, not to leave it at 25 or else it's going to look like you just cut it with a knife. Unless that's kind of what you're going for, then that's probably fine. And now let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so now let's see how it's kind of staying there. But now there's a little more structure to that jaw. And muzzle, so now he can probably eat if he wanted to. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's go. Let's make another layer and tweak. And at the end, you could commit all these things, and then they should be all good. What I mean by commit is like blending. Um, uh, 
uh, what I mean by commit is um, baking them all down like you would in Photoshop. Also tweak his neck. His neck is a little too thin. Especially if he has a giant head, right? I'm just trying to fix his neck because I think I was tweaking it earlier. And it went too, too straight. Yeah, let's tone down some of these uh, some of these uh, wrinkles because obviously his everybody's face is not just wrinkled up. We just want the hints and maybe secondary forms. Knock a lot of this stuff back. Then we can work on some ears. Else, not too bad. It's getting there. Let's see what else can we do? Let's start refining some of the other shapes. That's good. We're only an hour in, so. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it, man. Uh, it's called the uh, Nomad. Yes, yeah, freshly out. A lot of people are starting to use it, so you'll start seeing a lot more cool artwork from that. Hopefully soon. Give him a little bit of a underbite, kind of like a little bit like a chameleon. So he's always like kind of grumpy, you know. So we need to tweak that nose a lot, but we're we're getting there, you know. We're trying to hit all the areas. Trying to hit all the areas so that way there's not just uh, Oh, cool. 
Yeah, you guys need to leave. This is always um, recorded, so you guys can always catch it later in case you miss something. I could do some key shot renders of this stuff too, so we can see what that's looking like. Thanks. Glad you're digging it. So one thing that's happening here is that I have this. I see I have this. It's supposed to be a continuation, right? But then there's this part where it kind of dips in, like it's not continuing the nasal labial fold. So we're gonna fill in that gap. You see how it just kind of dips in? It's supposed to continue that. But let's add clay. First we add clay, just to fill in, it's like, think about it like stucco or like if you're doing traditional clay, you're just adding more clay there, smoothing it out and then you can round it off. And then we add too much clay, you can always just treat this area, you see how there's maybe a little bit too much there. And then we do, can do the blend on top just by smoothing. Now we get any kinks, we can always just massage those. We can always just use the trick of in flat, kind of cut the muzzle part out. Move that once or twice, and then flat to create an illusion of deeper wrinkle, right? Well, a lot of people don't like that red that I use, but. I like the red. It's my favorite color. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, it depends. Some I just do on a, on a week on a weekend or on on the week. You know, I just spend like two or three hours. Sometimes I spend a whole week, or sometimes I spend a month. It all depends what it's supposed to be, what it's for. You know. You know, like I started this as an iPad sketch, and that was maybe thirty minutes of just sketching, and then now we're putting maybe another forty minutes into it. So it really all depends on many, many things, you know, like what do I want to do? Do I want to UV it? Do I want to retopologize it? Um, here's some more reference too from 1024, which is really nice. See how this guy has like a break up here? Like he has nasal labor and then he has this. That's a potential thing we're going to be able to add. So you got to look at real, real scans, real people, because you want to be able to do this uh, referencing nature, you know? So let's save this real quick. Let's see. Uh, no, I haven't used any of the Anycubic. I heard really good things about it, and I was thinking of buying one of them, but I actually went with the Elegoo, Elegoo Mar or Elegoo Saturn. Saturn. Uh, I was going to go with the Mars, but the Saturn just came out, so I went with that. But it would be nice to get a and a cubit like a, a full ton and, and try that out especially with the prices right they're they're so inexpensive so 
so I see that guy has uh, like this, right? So I'll mass all this stuff out so you guys can kind of see. I think we hinted at this earlier, we just didn't. And this is still part of, part of like primary forms. And then there's also like a lot of pool that's coming from the, you know, like a broader one. Thinner one and then probably even thinner. So these are some that we want to kind of hint at. And we could hint at them at like a lower level. Just to break up that surface. See, now we're starting to get. So if I went back on the timeline, you should be able to see. Maybe go back one further. Yeah, right there. So between that and that. I know it's settled, but at, at the end when you start lighting the stuff, you start seeing, you know, what what's going on. Uh, yeah, I'm working on Cintiq. I usually work on a, just a regular, like the latest uh, tablet. So don't feel, I guess, uh, obligated to get a Cintiq. I know a lot of people... A lot of people get Cintiqs and they hate them. <laughs> I was one of those people in the beginning. Like I got a Cintiq many years ago and then I, I thought it was going to change my world and it, it didn't actually made everything harder. Uh, which was just kind of sucked but it is what it is. See, sometimes I'll go with a broader one and then I'll change it up to a, a thinner one. Just to get a different peak. Also, go the other direction. And when you're old, a lot of this stuff kind of you'll get a lot of this stuff where like a lot of this stuff fills in. Like there's no there's not a lot of definition left over because your your skin is no longer nice and elastic it's all kind of saggy so you see you kind of blend the jaw away a bit so sometimes we get little errors like that just uh, use the clay see so now it feels more natural the way the forms are, are going right So this way I like using the damp standard. I got a lower opacity. And kind of just hinting at some of these things. Well, it could be higher as well too. Just bigger. A bigger stroke. See, like this guy has some really nice wrinkles on here, and then going across that are breaking this surface, up. and that's kind of something I kind of want to add. So I always look at reality. So you'll be amazed, like what you find that you thought you knew and you don't. <laughs> uh, let me just save this real quick. Since we had a few crashes, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, you can ask me whatever you want, man. It's it's all good. Whatever I can answer, I'll try to answer. Whatever I can't, we'll we'll figure it out. So I'm here. I'm adding some clay because I kind of wanted to fill in this gap. You see how there's like a gap there for the, where there was that dip. And from there, I'll probably go and cut that up a little more. But I want to at least kind of fill in like the main structure. See, so now that we have those and they're kind of going over the structure, 
now you can go with this and kind of cut them up. I guess one important thing is to not cut straight, like not just have a cut like that, you know, because it looks unnatural. Like maybe that you could do that for your primary forms, but try not to do that for your other forms. So that's why you see me kind of cutting like, like I'm still kind of making a straight line, but I'm kind of cutting that line so that it doesn't have a, a perfect cut. If that's if that kind of explains it. Now that leads back to this stuff here, like getting enough. some more epic epic music on because this is not so epic <laughs> all right so how to create a realistic armor so what do you mean by when you, when it gets uh, gets very big, like it's file size or polygon density, or uh, I guess what what do you mean by that? could elaborate that a little bit more and then that would help because usually when creating armor right um, I'll tend to block something out in ZBrush but then I would go ahead and um, uh, what is it called kind of retopologize it in, in Maya to make it optimal but so when you hit three it smooths out the way you want it to do and then you can bring it back to ZBrush once you have all those edges refined and from there, kind of um, add alphas to break it up and all that stuff and do that in displacement. But you want to have your base structure be like as low poly as possible while maintaining all the edges, you know? And that's how you kind of keep things light. So when you subdivide them, then you can start adding like the chipping and all that stuff or, or hammering, that type of detail. Oh, it's too thick then you probably need to th I would say you probably want to resurface like the top part right but then you want to add the you know look at references for armor and figure out what kind of thicknesses they have so let's see and kind of redo those uh, let's see if I can find some good images like if you look at this right start looking at like the thicknesses between these layers you know because if not, it's going to look too heavy and it looks like you can't wear it. Like it's going to be, it's going to, if you're going to war, it's going to not work for you. It's going to be too heavy and you're going to just die because you got tired. Uh, but yeah, I want to say then you could tweak, the, the tweak, like find good references to figure out like thicknesses of all this stuff. All this stuff, if you notice it, it's not too thick. Or if there is, maybe the chest piece is thicker than the other pieces, but all the other pieces are thinner because they have to be able to flex. If you have some example images, uh, you could post them if you want, and then we could we could take a look. Oh, what brush? So here we can also start breaking this up, right? Because this is we can start adding clay. Because if you just start smoothing it, you're gonna just get the crease. So you want to add clay. Kind of help.
And even here, I'm still I'm starting to go too much into like detail mode, so we can start erasing some of these stuff and blending some of this stuff away. We're just trying to get some form breakup, right? So I'm also sometimes moving with the smooth stronger to kind of decimate some of this stuff. Just to get a better read. Because let me, uh, let's see, I think we have the original one. Yeah, so we can go between these two. If I turn that off, let me uh, just get to my other keyboard. So let's look at this. Oh. So you see how we're going from all the primary stuff that's fine to block out, you know, either in ZBrush or wherever you want to block it out. But here, now we're starting to get to like the next level of refinement, right? The mouth, the nose, the eyes. It's all starting to get a better flow. I'm not saying it's perfect or it's done. It's just, um, you kind of see, right? And that's kind of what I want to show you guys, like. Like, it's all about refining those shapes. At uh, what point do I do tertiary form? Once I do the ears and neck and the rest of the details that I would like the rest of the the rest of the head because obviously there's still a lot left for the head, right? Like still we start to do lips, we still have to do uh, brows, uh, neck, you know, maybe give this guy a little bit of a old neck. You know, a little bit of what old people get here. I think there's a front view on this guy too. Let me see if I can find it to show you guys what I'm talking about. Oh, like this guy has it. See, so you're starting to get a little bit of these these two little prongs. And I'll probably introduce a little bit of more. I haven't been looking at this image. But a little bit of the fattiness, a little bit of the depth. So we'll probably introduce a little bit more of that. That's that's my next big, big reference that I'm looking at. So this one's pretty good too for the nose. So I might refine it. Too bad it's a really small image, but uh, it's pretty good. But yeah, so sometimes you gotta just forget about the tiny details. It's so easy to kind of get stuck there, and like you look at your model, and you're like, it looks it doesn't look right. I like changing the color just to see what, what's going on with it, you know? Here I feel like it's going okay, so let's see, what can we do? So in this case, this old guy... Oh, let's refine this a little more. Fill in this, smooth this out. has that gap right here, right? So that kind of helped me see that gap, which is great. And then he has, um, the nasal label fold for him goes a little lower. Right, and his, you see a little bit of a roll pattern. What do I mean by roll pattern? The roll pattern, the part that I erased, you know, that it was going all the way down, uh, like it, was, it looked like a little little tube or a little bit of um, 
like you know you roll up a tube and you put it on top of a clay it was my kind of erase maybe a little too much so we're gonna maybe just add a little bit of it not a lot just a little hint but his goes splits off right so you can't just add the raw you have to blend the clay right in the middle kind of smooth it just to get a little bit of that break up here between those forms and the funny part is that he has a really crazy shape here he has this V shape so let's let's sketch it out first so he has this like Y shape So one thing we could do is um, mask it. And then inflate it a little bit. take some of these guys down like maybe I went too deep with that one or too, too up so we could always just flatten it out a little bit with the smooth it out a little bit so you see this has changed quite the amount right yeah yeah that's what I'm trying to do I'm trying to play around with different colors to see what what I can make it look like clay you know and also like my trick my eyes to kind of looking at it differently yeah, like earlier I was liking this now I'm I'm gonna smooth it out just a tiny bit and add a little bit of clay to break that up Now we can look at a little bit of a brow stuff, brow situation. You map these guys out a little bit. So I tend to map, before I want to commit to some of this stuff, I sometimes tend to kind of um, mask it to think to see how I will probably like it if I were to like it right and then kind of So a lot of people forget that this is pretty fatty sometimes.
Yeah, it should always be safe, so you can always can always check out the check out the replay. So you see here I kinda messed up, so it's okay. You gotta go back. Just undo a little bit. So instead of doing the in flat, you have to go back with the clay. And this is kind of like what you can see that I'm, I'm doing back and forth. You know, sometimes you do use one tool, sometimes you use the other tool. So I'm trying to get a little bit of a hint of breakdown or break up there. Yeah, we're we're getting there. Let's see any questions? Let me move this chat around. Yeah, so sometimes I find things that I don't like, you know, like, uh, well, you guys can see how much I change it, but one thing that I'm still not sure of that which one I like more is the ears. Like, do I want ears that are sticking up or do I want ears that are going down? You know, like there's something cool about this arch, but there's also something kind of uh, the bottom part, like, like it feels kind of like dumbbell or kind of not menacing, you know? And that's something that I kind of not, I'm not sure how to solve quite yet, so I haven't attacked it. But I would probably take maybe make a layer and start playing around with that. See, for some for like this angle, it looks okay, but from the other angle, I, I don't like. So there's things that I would change, and sometimes I scrap the whole thing. Like I might do an hour and then be like, "This is going nowhere. Like it's not going to make anything better." So I just kind of get rid of it, and that's okay. It's part of the design change, right? It's part of the whole design of your whole sculpt. Like here, he also doesn't have any, any caruncles. So we need to place those. Those are pretty important. So here's what I'll do. I'll duplicate this guy. Wow, that music got epic pretty quick. What is that? This guy here? Nope. It's one of these guys. Nope. There we go. Sometimes I forget which one does what. But sometimes if you're trying to scale something and start scaling towards the origin, I just have to change that little setting. But it happens to all of us, you know? That's why we're, we're all here, right? We're all... See in that case. So it's like the corner of your eye. Some people forget they don't have those, they forget to put those on, and I think it becomes pretty obvious. And it becomes kind of weird, like you're trying to figure out why your eye doesn't look right. Because you need to kind of leave room for that. part of the design so we need to add those guys well the nice thing about zebras is never too late to change any of this stuff you know 
that's the thing that's that's amazing about this like in clay if you forget to do this or doing this thing non-linearly it, it would suck Let's see any questions Yeah, because you already have a sphere there, so instead of having to place another one, right? Just shrink it. So this I'll probably refine once I have the topology more set. But I wanted to at least have a placeholder for it. See, because it's it's such a small little piece of uh, of detail. I guess not even detail, part of the anatomy that um, sometimes if you forget to place it in there, it looks something doesn't look right. But it makes a big difference. But let's uh, kind of Join it with this guy, make a little. I'll take this into key shot in a minute and uh, can explore. Explore there for a second. So this guy's at a good spot. Uh, let's see, let's check him out. We had one crash, let's just save. Um. <coughs> let's see what he's gonna look like in Key Shop. So for me, I think it's pretty important early on to do some render tests and see what this whole model is looking like. Sometimes it looks great and you see a whole bunch of mistakes in, in a different application. Let's see. Well, it's looking pretty good. It's still, you see, it's only primary, secondary forms. I don't know, at least I think it looks okay. What do you guys think? There we go, much better. So we could tweak the parameters on this. Let's 
find a better HDR to kind of test this with. Oh, thanks. This is says join. It's not it's not too terrible, right? Hey, what's up, Lord of before you? <laughs> It it is pretty complex, but if you take it small steps at a time, it it um it gets easier. So just you know, take it small steps at a time. I think the scale on this guy might be. Let's see. There we go. Now we're getting some subsurface. Sometimes the scale. If you're having issues with the scale. Uh, like you saw earlier, it was like no matter I adjusted the subsurface and it wasn't uh, kind of picking that up, making everything softer. Now it depends if you're going to render this uh, like this. Um, sometimes the subsurface or your scene is the wrong scale and it, and it doesn't look right. Yeah, I say try the free ZBrush. If you're just starting out, try it out. It um, it could help you a lot just to get started, you know. And then from there, as soon as you're learning more and more, then maybe do a subscription or do the full paid version. Take it small steps at a time. There we go. Now we're getting that. So you see, now that I'm looking at this under this lighting, it, it's showing me that this is way too lumpy, you know? Like those things should be a little flatter, less lumpy. You know, some of this stuff is okay, a little lumpy of in here. I wanna have clean forms, so sometimes doing these type of tests, you start seeing forms that you're not seeing in ZBrush. pretty good but the nice thing is that you could pause it you can go back to ZBrush and start tweaking those things just taking some of those down not completely away just down same thing with the chin clean that up a little bit right start seeing what's up with the forms happening here sometimes you got to be a little harsher on the lighting uh, let's see any questions there's I done it both ways right I done it where I resize this the model the overall main group let me lower this music I, I resize the overall model or sometimes I just resize this this the scale the shader or sometimes I rescale the, the, the let me see let's let's update this real quick um, key shot. So, so the main thing is you have to remember to unpause it, and then you go back to back here, and then kick it back. Uh, so sometimes I'll change like the overall scene size. Like I'll just grab this, uh, like the top group, and uh, change the scale here. So like you could do that, and that would take the effect. Or sometimes I'll just change the shader. Or sometimes if the if I zoom out. And the environment is like really small compared to my head then i'll change the the overall thing 
So it, it all depends, you know. Especially I'm just doing tests. Like in this case, I just changed the shader. It was much easier, but I could probably change the head as well. Hopefully that helps. But you could do it. You could do it three ways. So it's up to you. Yeah, it could be overwhelming. I think if you just take it small steps at a time, it, it would help a lot. Oh, thanks, sir. Well, you know, I'm here to help you guys to share what I'm doing, and you guys can see how I fail, how you fail, how we all fail, and how we move through that stuff. That's the main thing, right? Like, getting to the fail part, move on. Instead of failing and be like, I give up. I think that's what happens to a lot of people. Like, they just start, and then they give up, and it's like, all right, like, that's it. Like, that sucks. <laughs> But you don't want to do that, you know. Sometimes you're so close to figuring it out and you just give up. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's just start from a sphere. Not a Z-sphere, but just a sphere. <laughs> this is terrifying. Uh, what's terrifying? The creature or, or the process? The main, the main thing for, I guess, for, for you guys that I, um, that I would advise you is just try making things out of a sphere. Try replicating something. Like, find, find something. Oh, I saw, I just saw this image. It looks really cool. Let me show you. Sorry. It's, inspiration comes from every place, right? This image. And I think I want to add a little bit of that bony structure more on here. I may be missing. See, so you find images on concept stuff. You find photos, and sometimes you have to pick and choose what you you know which which direction you want to take your designs in. Yes, I always have reference open, even if I don't use it or if I'm just kind of inspired. Like maybe I see one little thing that I like, and then I just look look at that, and that's it. So, uh, so eventually, you build up your library and kind of do it, you know, just kind of do it naturally and not have to worry about it, but. I tend to always have some kind of reference just because that's the way I work but you don't have to do that you see now we clean out the forehead we clean out the mouth or, or the chin we just had a we had to add a little bit more detail up there but it's 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 now less lumpy and sometimes you don't have to be you know you can't be afraid to do that you know like yeah I added some detail there I just erased it do it again not a big deal Also pick, you know, find. Let's find. There's. I know there's some nice ones. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. I always use this one all the time. I guess one thing that I'm looking at uh, compared to a lot of stuff is that I need to integrate the ears a little nicer. So let's maybe go and do that real quick. What do I mean by that? So let's make a layer. Let's go to the highest level. Let's make a layer. Go to the lowest level. And use the move tool. I think what I mean by that is that the kind of a, the baby Yoda thing, right? Like baby Yoda has some giant ears and they're kind of integrated into the head. Like they, they taper where mine feels like they just got extruded out, which they, they were. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hold on. Let's before we continue. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, mostly the move tool. The move tool is like the most, like the like the best tool. That damn standard are like my top and and clay, I guess those top three. I would say, you stick to those three, those would be good. I use mostly Keyshot just to help me visualize things, but I render in Arnold. That's my main render for now. So, but Keyshot is good to like just do a quick thing. Don't have to worry about UVs or anything. Just uh, get you know get on it. That type of thing. So that's kind of what I mean. It wasn't. It wasn't integrated all the way. 
but that's what we're here you know you see do those test renders you see some errors you could tweak it you know even like the head the head height maybe could be it tweaked a little bit broad strokes we're back to primary see and I feels like the like the ears are more part of it so let's uh let's go to our higher res turn that layer on and off you know maybe too much maybe not enough but let's uh let's check let's do some more renders pause that it's just like sometimes when you're rendering something becomes more apparent that's like something is off so we see like where it used to be cut here you know. See now it feels more like it's part of his head, like it's it's growing, it's it's growing, changing the overall shape, not just extruded. Oh, let's see. Yeah, sometimes just take do little projects, make a hand, make a nose, make an eye, and then you start building those pieces. Like, oh, let's make uh, the mouth, let's make the rest of the head. You know, start with little things. Yeah, right now I'm just simulating different lighting, just kind of to see what what kind of errors or what kind of weird things am I getting. You know. Just playing around with the lights to see what kind of um. See, there you go. That feels like he's more in this environment. He'll live in the house somewhere in, in London or I guess I lay here. <laughs> yeah, less, it makes him less menacing, right? But maybe if he had chewed up ears or his ears were maybe a little angled, a little higher, those things could help. And that's something that I could play with a layer, you know? So I have all these things in layers. I could always revert back and not and go back to my original idea. See, we got like five minutes, so let's answer some more questions. Yeah, so I usually read the apologize in Maya, and then I uh, either you be it in Maya or you be it in, depending on what, what it's going to be used for, you be it in ZBrush, and then just kind of play around with that, and then texture it in uh, either Mari or Substance Painter. Yeah, I could go over my workflow more, um, I guess, next time to kind of be more specific. But it's mostly sculpt, retopologize, um, texture, and then just uh, look dev. But I do a little bit of like look dev or, or lighting in between to see what's wrong so I can fix my sculpt. No, right now there's no SSS map. So that's what we were talking about earlier. Like I just have... Um, so I have the skin, right? And all I'm all I'm doing is changing the trans the transparency to more or less. Um, you could move the slider around, and then make it really make the ears crazy. Let's see, like twenty. And, but now you're looking; he's starting to look like a candle, right? <laughs> also, my thickness might not be correct in ZBrush, so I might need to correct that as well. Uh, but something like five was doing okay. It's also more when you have a light behind them. That's when you really notice it. That's when these uh, studio ones are, are pretty nice. Uh, depending on which one you like using. Uh, let's see. Usually, usually this one's pretty good. You just kind of move it around. Right now they're kind of in the front, so we're gonna move those around. So right now they're directly in the front. It's fine when it only has. You can also just make your own. You know, start with a black background, and then do. Uh, let's see. You can edit the HDR. And add lights. Uh, let's see. Where is it? Well, it's been a while since I've adjusted one. I usually just use the presets. Uh, but you just, you sh then you can just move it around. And kind of place one behind it. 
change the size of it too. And then you can start building your own that way too. So you can make it more dramatic, you know, it's coming from the top, one's well, coming more from the bottom. And you can have one directly from behind him that's uh you change the shape of it too. Maybe let it resolve. Looks looks pretty good. So you could do something like that, or you could just I, I tend to just kind of stick with the, the standard ones there. They're pretty good. Um, the interior ones are pretty nice. I like this. This is one of my favorite ones too. So it's really up to you. Um, you know, you can change the height, the size of this stuff. Or you could just make it a black background and just do that as well. So many options. So I guess that, that does it for this stream. Uh, we'll see you guys in two weeks. And hopefully I'll have this guy done. And uh, we can go over some more stuff. Thanks for joining. I really appreciate it. Let me, get, let me give you guys some links to some of my my website. Oh, I didn't give you guys my Gumroad this time. Uh, let's see. So you guys could download my interface if you guys want. Start with that. But really appreciate you guys showing up and kind of being part of this and you know hopefully you learned something you had fun or at least a new approach of how to do some of the stuff oh thank you thank you very much if you want to check out some of my past streams, here's a link to that as well. Feel free to follow me on Instagram or um, any of these other platforms. I always tend to be posting all kinds of work in progress stuff. So, you know. Um, yeah, but that's kind of what we did today. So let's uh, maybe check out uh, what we started with and where we left off. So you guys can see the progression oh, let's solo that so then we, we started with that and went to that so what do you guys think uh, improvement or actually not improved I think it's an improvement so cool thank you guys i'll see you guys next time um thanks for thanks for joining yeah i'll stay safe man thanks yeah 100 percent improved right I mean, you see it's just you just gotta start with a sketch sometimes and then from there bring it to zbrush and really polish it up next time maybe maybe next time i'll leave it and we could do pours and once i retopologize we could do all the pour detail and all kinds of other stuff if you guys are interested All right, take care, Ashton. One way, only one way. Cool. Yeah, so maybe I'll read to apologize so you guys can see, and then um, we'll go. You know, we'll do the ears and neck and the rest of the head, because it's also important to do the back of the head. <laughs> All right, guys. See you guys next time. Take care. Uh, when's my next stream? In two weeks. So I do it every other week. <laughs> yeah, maybe he needs some mullet. Maybe he does need some kind of hair. We'll find out. <laughs> Full proof. <laughs> cool, guys. See you. <laughs>